Hi, hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to this episode of ours, which we call as WordCast. And this episode, each time we come, we bring something different. And today we have an awesome guy uh, with us. He is called as Truth Sicker. And uh, he has an awesome testimony and also amazing uh, YouTube channel, which I uh, recently got in uh, touch with. And um, I'm learning lots from this YouTube channel. So we'll give you the details about all that stuff. But today I just want to welcome Derek. And uh, we are excited, man, to listen from you some amazing stuff your experiences and what you got to bring to us today so before we begin what uh, would, would be great if you share something about you yeah thanks again thanks for having me man it's an um, honor to finally connect with you here and been watching your stuff too on your youtube so i like uh, what you're doing thank you so much uh, yeah so um yeah, my, my testimony, uh, I come out of um, dark occult stuff and witchcraft really on the negative side, doing a lot of that stuff as a, as a teenager, looking into it and practicing ritual and stuff like that. And I found out that it was real, um, ended up doing a lot of meditations and things trying to connect, connect with lower level entities on the other side, which uh, ended up coming through, did all these uh, meditations and like none of them worked until they all worked at the same time. And so mm. all of these different portals and doorways that I was opening up, opened up at once. And um, I became a channel for these entities to come through, but they would speak foreign languages, couldn't understand them. And it was scary and they would torment me and just crazy stuff. I mean, I've seen uh, entities uh, appear out of thin air uh, that wow. physically form here in, in this realm and um, bring with it, you know, demonic curses and stuff like that. So. And this was all as a teenager getting into it. Um, a couple of years before I had been saved, got filled with the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit in 1998. And, and, uh, but I fell away. And, uh, but as I was opening up the doors to these uh, other realms, um, and I was tormented in my body, tormented in my mind, my health started to deteriorate, uh, called out for the Lord, knew that that was the only thing that was going to set me free. So uh, in a moment of desperation, going crazy headed they would pull me in and out of trances at will I couldn't turn it on or off and um, gave my heart back to the Lord in 2000 cried out for him and prayed after having an episode one night woke up the next morning feeling refreshed and went in my room and took all the posters and um, enchantment stuff and witchcraft books and got rid of everything and dedicated my heart back to the Lord and this was in um, September of 2000 that I have been back walking with the Lord um, ever since. And so just kind of doing the regular Christian experience from that point on, we were in youth group when we came into uh, Christ, me and my, uh, my wife it was my girlfriend at the time. She made that transition with me doing the Christian experience, going to youth group, going to revivals, always in church, that kind of thing, healing revivals, Brownsville revival, all of that stuff here. And um, um, just started going deeper in the Lord, deeper in my studies, deeper in my encounters and stuff like that. And so eventually the Lord kind of brought me back full circle to really study the metaphysical, the deep uh, stuff within the scriptures that um, gets overlooked in a lot of churches and stuff like that. It really has given me a heart to go back to people who are still in, whether it's witchcraft or magic or just who, who are seeking out the deep stuff of this reality and i believe that the answers are within the scriptures and so i feel like the lord's kind of illuminated my path to, to go into that and kind of bridge the gap about those who are looking for sp spirituality i believe true spirituality is um, um found within the bible and found within christ and uh and sometimes it looks a little bit like these other religions or these other spiritual paths that we just deem new age or throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I'm there to bridge the gap and uh, take that, take our spirituality back, I guess, if you will. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, at this point of time, what are you, what are you doing? Are you, I mean, uh, are you uh, a leadership or are you into uh, ministering? How do you minister to people? Well, so the podcast I think is like the biggest form of uh 
um, leadership that I do. And, um, you know, I, on my podcast, I, I interview people from all walks of life about the spirit world, really, uh, their encounters with whatever it may be. And so I don't discriminate. I'll have pastors on, then I'll have mediums on and psychics and really just pick their brain and um, understand it from their perspective. And then I try to offer my perspective in a loving way, not to debate them, not to kick them out, but mm -hmm. to show them that really, I think that uh, I think that our, our spirituality is key. I think we have what they're looking for. So I just kind of invite them on um, to talk and uh, get to the bottom of some things, figure some things out. And uh, so with that, that's the biggest reach that I have, I think. But a lot of people look at that as um, our church, right? People every week, every time we go live, they're there. They get in, you know, many times we end with prayer. We tap in through prayer. But then we also, with that, um, we have a, a we have an online community. And so we do, uh, we do something called the School of the Mystics every Thursday night, which is like our small group. And so people who want to kind of tap in deeper to what we're bringing to the table through prayer, through meditation, through going deeper in our experiences with Christ, through, you know, even tapping into our um, um, spiritual giftings and a safe, safe environment to practice and to learn and to discuss. And so our Thursday night groups are really good. And uh, so that's kind of like the leadership. And then we just kind of do life with people over the Internet. We have Discord apps and things like that to where we're connected. Uh, with people from all over the world and um, it's really beautiful so as far as physically I mean we have a uh, we have a small fellowship of people here um, but I think what we do it's few and far between but it's definitely growing for sure 100% wow. and not even from what I'm doing but just in in obedience and sticking with it and other people like the Lord taking them into some of these deeper areas or, or at least what they thought was deep mm -hmm. early on so I really see like th this work expanding and other people uh, grabbing a hold of it and just being open and honest about their relationship with the Lord and their spiritual work. And so a lot of ministries are springing out or look similar to what we're doing. Um, so it's really encouraging. But for me, our thing is really with the podcast and our Thursday nights. And, uh, you know, I do, I have, uh, I'm working on some courses and uh, I got my book out. My book is, uh, all of this, all, all of the experiences yeah. and all that stuff is within my book as well. I just finished the audio book. Wow. I'm actually waiting for that to go up and get approved and everything. So yeah, just with the content, you know, I do music, I do spiritual hip hop. So even that's a form of evangelism, you know, to yeah. bring people into what we're doing. So yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm heading straight to get your book uh, today because, uh, the stuff that I've been seeing on your podcast has been really benefiting me personally. Like uh, I see that you get people with different uh, spirituality with the, you know, different facets of spirituality. Like uh, I, I see people into astral projection, divination, uh, sacred geometry. Like that's, that's, lot of stuff that you bring on on your channel so i love uh, how you are being a bridge to connect that to christianity so before we move further in speaking about that now this there is this uh, misconception that many uh, christian uh, people have is uh, once you come into christianity once you receive god receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, they tend to start demonizing all this stuff. And they, so how do you, how do you transition or how do you connect that gap? How do you bridge that? Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's obviously with what a lot of religious people do is we yeah. demonize what we don't understand. And yeah. just because it's, it looks different. Um, we, we haven't heard it. Our pastor hasn't told us about it. We haven't read it in the Bible. So immediately it's of the devil. Mm -hmm. Like if it's not in the Bible, it's of the devil kind of thing. And so, um, for me, it was, uh, you know, having these encounters and stuff, but then like relating it back to the scriptures, because I, um, I, I tear the Bible up, you know, and, um, really was, a, a, a um, Berean of the word and studying it. And, and I would find, these experiences within the Bible, some of these supernatural things that I had read about or, or even watched in a movie, you know, cause a lot of this stuff is in the supernatural movies and stuff. And there's a lot of ancient spiritual technology hidden, but it's sprinkled everywhere. It's not just in this one 
religion, if you're, or at least one church anyway. Your church isn't going to teach the fullness of the Bible. It's just they're going to have their things that they're really good at, whether it's yeah. grace, whether it's the cross, whether it is spiritual gifts, mm. but maybe they lack in another area. So it's just about studying the fullness here a little, there a little. And mm. I think it comes from allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you. First John is the spirit that teaches you all things and allow uh, him to teach you and following him where he's calling you. If he's calling you to look into this, if he's calling you to look into that. But for me, it's using the Bible as a plumb line and using mm. the Bible as a filter. So all of this information, whether you mentioned divination or astral projection or whatever, like mm -hmm. how does that fit in the Bible? And mm -hmm. so a lot of these things aren't mentioned in the Bible by those names. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say astral projection. Mm -hmm. We call in the church realm. Now they're calling it spirit travel. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if I use that term astral projection, it, it turns off a lot of Christians immediately. Mm -hmm. But if we use spirit travel, they're like, oh, okay. You know, um, if we even use the term, you know what I'm saying? Glossolalia, glossala. No, 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 that's demonic. <laughs> Speaking in tongues. <laughs> okay. And you know what I'm saying? So you got to use their language when you're speaking to them. Yeah. And I think it's the same way when I'm speaking with people outside of uh, Christianity. I can't go in speaking Christianese to them. And it's the sanctification process, brother, and rest, you know, and they don't know any of that stuff. So we got to, it's like being a bridge like Jesus was. He was a bridge. And so Paul said, become all things to all men so that you can win some. So we have to speak it in their language. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe maybe that's there's a deep spiritual understanding there with the Pentecost when there was people who spoke every language there, but yep. they got filled with the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And then they all spoke the same thing, even though they had different languages. Mm -hmm. You say astral travel, you say spirit. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's some deep correlations in there when it's the spirit that teaches you and the spirit that brings us together. So for me, it's taking all of those, those ideas and seeing if they fit. And what I found is that a lot of these things early on were with, within us, whether they're within our spirit, the, and, but we don't know how to articulate them. We never read them in the Bible. Uh, maybe it's in our DNA and kind mm -hmm. of the same thing. And then uh, eventually, as you're reading the scriptures and praying and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he'll show you the stuff in the yeah. Bible. So it's like, I know this is real. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, may, maybe I've seen it in a movie again, and it mm -hmm. resonated deep within my spirit. And the Lord spoke to me, but I don't know how to articulate it. And then you're reading the scriptures and boom, there's the revelation. There it is in the Bible. Wow. This mm. is what that movie was talking about. Mm. Communing with the ancestors. Wow. It's in the Bible. Mm. Wow. The ancestors are talking to Jesus from, be from beyond the grave. Mm. Moses and Elijah's meeting with him when he goes to pray. Really? Wow. Mm. And then I'm watching Star Wars. Mm. And this is communicated with it. And Yoda's teaching his disciples how to commune with uh, his ancestors or his, his leaders that came before him. And mm -hmm. we just kind of throw all that stuff out, but then I'm finding these examples within the scriptures, you know? And so, mm -hmm. and I knew, I know I've even heard you say this, like, it's not about, you know, just agreeing upon doctrine about what you've been told or even reading something one time, but really the unlearning process is throwing everything out mm -hmm. and letting the Lord teach you through the scriptures and start making your doctrines when you start seeing uh, repetition within the Bible. That's something true. that just repeated over and over and this was something normal and if, if they did it then i believe that we should do it too you know that's and if it was good for them then we need it even more you know, whether true. it is the spiritual practices or whether it is the grace and uh and preaching of the cross all of it together absolutely absolutely i think uh you know the bible clearly says i mean jesus uh the, in, i think in john it says that uh you Jesus did so many things that he, the, the books in the world are not enough. So we need to uh, come to the point to understand that there's so much more out there. There's so much of technology out there. But if you do it with the right heart uh, and the Holy Spirit behind it, there is nothing wrong in picking up the technology, the, the, the spiritual technology out there. And the problem that modern or uh, apparently we are doing is cr when Christians start throwing the baby with the bath, the, 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 the water and the baby, you know, with the bathtub. So you see, that's the issue that we presently face when we start looking at the Bible and start look looking at the letter of the Bible, but not the spirit behind it. So, yeah, man, I just love uh, what you've been doing. 
and uh, you said that you are uh, having this mystical mystical school uh, uh, mystical uh, uh, what do you call it yeah it's a, it, well it's our, it's our online community it's okay. um it's the school of the mystics and so it's a uh, it's it was just something for me to to connect with supporters they have people who support the podcast and support my work and things like that so it's like something for us to come together and to learn and those who want to go deeper and those who are looking for community you know so wow. we put that together and um so we just have conversation with like-minded people um i think all of my ministry is like uh geared towards the younger version of myself the younger seeker when i was having um supernatural experiences and and and, and i had nobody to talk to within the church and um, so my my goal is to be to be what I needed when I was young, and I found myself calling in the podcast, trying to talk with the host, you know, um, asking them about meditation, asking them about yoga, whatever it was, because I had these questions. And you go to church, you you get demonized. So I feel like you know what I've done and and what I position myself to to talk on these subjects is the fact that Christians are having these experiences. Wow. in the church in a biblical setting but they don't they don't have any 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 grid for it because mm -hmm. if you go to tell your pastor hey man uh every night at 3 p.m an angel comes to speak to me in my room what should i do mm. they might, they're going to try to rebuke it they're going to try to <laughs> rebuke the angel and yeah. shut down communication and you know and that's what happened to me like i was having dreams and visions yeah really detailed about the church that i was visiting and i went to the pastor youth pastor at the time and said, Hey, I'm having these dreams. I think they're from the Lord telling me about something that's coming. That's going to happen. Mm. And he started praying against it and saying it was the devil and stuff like that. And that just happened many times and, um, ended up finding myself in a position where I was throwing my, uh, pearls before swine <laughs> seeking validation from the leadership, which I think not validation, but we should be able to bring our stuff to the leadership and help us figure it out. And they couldn't. So, the only re the only stuff I could find at the time was the new age stuff, the spiritual stuff. And mm. I was having, you know, I mean, I was having all kind of exp experiences uh, in the Lord, but there was no Christian grid for it. So I had to look into, uh, you know, supernatural phenomenon or quote unquote spiritual spirituality or new age and stuff. And it gave me a grid. But even though I had that grid, I would still filter it through the scriptures. And so I want to be able to, when people are having these experiences and these encounters, give you a Christian, a biblical approach and not just demonize everything. That's too easy. Absolutely. Just demonic, Jesus only, brother. All we need is, like, I've been there. But um, but to be able to give people, answer their questions. And say, L listen, man, maybe, maybe the Lord is, like, eat, with that thing, I mean, we talked about it on the School of the Mystics, that whole experience or... Samuel's waking up in the middle of the night. He's got a voice calling out to him at 3 a.m. in the morning. And uh, he thinks it's the, the priest Eli in the next room. He's like, hey, are you you keep calling me? You waking me up out of a dead sleep? It's like, it's like, no, it's not me. Next time you hear it, say, Lord, is that you? And he did. He, the next time he got woke up, he heard this voice calling to him, waking him. He said, Lord, is it you? And the Lord began to train him, speak to him. And so we have those things happen as well. Yeah middle of the night feel like somebody's calling your name and at three in the morning you're awakened out of a dead sleep and you don't know what it is maybe it's your dream maybe I've heard like people knocking on the window and stuff and just different things that happen mm. at three in the morning and then what if they, if you don't know the scriptures or look at the stuff in the bible you're not going to know that there's a grid for it for that situation there's a beautiful story in the book of job which i love job chapter four where he wakes up mm. and there's a spirit in the hallway Mm -hmm. He wakes up at, at three in the morning when, when everyone's asleep. It says when deep sleep falleth on men and he wakes up and he looks over in the hallway and there's a spirit. He said mm -hmm. it looks like a, it's formless and void and it keeps changing shape. So it's like a smoke. It's like a mist. Mm -hmm. It's a messenger of, from God. Mm -hmm. These messengers, these angels, these beings, it is God speaking. Mm -hmm. But he speaks through his messengers. Mm -hmm. And so he woke up. And he looked at it and it said he got chills. It said that all the hair on his, his body stood on ends and he got chill bumps. Mm -hmm. Hair on his neck stood up. And he said that the thing was formless and void, but it te it telepathically shared a uh, message with him. Mm -hmm. And said that it sh to his deepest innermost being, it said that is this mortal man bigger than God, essentially. He had this message that rocked his world. 
in mm. the out of a dead sleep. Mm. That stuff's still happening, man. Yeah. It didn't die with Job. Yeah. Didn't die with Jesus. Didn't die with the apostle. It's still happening. So yeah. we got to be able to give a grid for the stuff because mm. people are waking up. And if yeah. you go to the doctor, they're gonna put you on medication. Mm -hmm. Hey man, yeah, we can stop those. We can stop those voices. Yeah. You, so when you get around people, you're able to pick up on energies and thoughts. Oh, we can stop that for you. It's a pill. Yeah. It's just riddling, riddling to slow you down. It'll, you know, there's that. There's, oh, you can't sleep in the middle of the night because God's calling you as an intercessor or whatever it may be. Or here's mm -hmm. Ambien. Ambien will help you get to sleep. It'll quiet that. You know, there's all of this stuff. Or even if you're googling it, you're gonna find New Age stuff. They're gonna teach you mm -hmm. how to do it and without Christ, without the Holy Spirit. They're going to bring you into uh, contracts with demons and lower entities and stuff. So I want to make sure that we're doing it the right way yeah. and that we give you the true knowledge and the true spirituality behind it because it is biblical. It's all throughout absolutely. the Absolutely. 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 So uh, according to you, like uh, we see the new age, uh, people doing this, uh, using this technology, I mean, they can astral project, they can spirit travel, they can uh, see things in the realm of the spirit, they can uh, tell what's going to come in the future sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, uh, you know, uh, are really supernatural. So uh, I, I see many people, uh, they talk about uh, imagination and recreating stuff, the visualization and all that stuff, vision boards. So, I mean, there are people out there who are really benefiting with, with their technology, but they don't have Christ with them. So why, what would you offer, uh, to, to such people? Like why, why do you need to give them Christ? Um, you know, through, through, I think, I think that those giftings and callings are without repentance. Anybody can tap into it. They're God given, um, uh, abilities and, and technology that anybody can tap into. Just the bad thing is that the church is behind at this point. Now, early on the church, the church knew mm -hmm. even in, even in like, you know what I'm saying? The Renaissance, like they knew they were, they were into deep stuff. I mean, we got pictures of priests levitating and mm -hmm. UFOs and, and ancient, uh, Christian art you know, angels that are coming out, you know, all kinds of really deep, far out stuff that we just were lost to it now mm -hmm. uh, because we're not connected to nature and all of that kind of thing. But what I would say to the, uh, the, the person um, is that um, forgiveness of sins, um, it comes through, through Jesus Christ. The, um, um, that, that grace and gra grace and truth come, came through Jesus Christ. And so they may say that like, you know, enlightenment comes through this, or they've got some really cool spiritual technology, but uh, to be able to, to speak to the soul of men and, 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 and what's going on in uh, truth, mm -hmm. um, which is found in Christ and, and mm -hmm. what, and, you know what I'm saying, what he did. So um, everyone, everyone carries their sins um, unless you, you have put off the old man through Christ and you have this conscience that there's nothing you can do. You can lie to yourself. You can try to suppress it with the good works, you can try to suppress it with uh, uh, spirituality or, or drugs or alcohol or whatever. You can try to suppress that stuff. But uh, the forgiveness of sins comes through what Jesus did on the cross for all of humanity. And it's operated through love. And so I really believe that if you're tapping in through love, you're tapping in through Christ. And, uh, and, and maybe they don't call it Christ or Jesus. They, that's not even his name. You mm -hmm. know, so maybe they're they're operating out of that and they're finding forgiveness. And that's the interesting thing is you find a lot of these different uh, religions or, you know, spiritual technologies that allow you to what I call walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. They allow you to have this uh, uh, um, spiritual life, which, which is a uh, peace walking in the spirit. Um, and so they, they have those kind of things. So I just try instead of um, those who are seeking, um, looking into lesser spirits or, ancestors or anything like that jesus um is, is they are all subservient to jesus mm -hmm. they have to bow to king jesus so any demon any spirit that can claim itself any devil any demon and you find yourself in in midst in in, in places of chaos without the, the person of the lord jesus and so what he has to offer and what he did for humanity um and did for everyone 
it's it's so worth it and you, you're missing out so mm. it would be um i would be doing a disservice not to mention jesus in the midst of spirituality or whatever because or just tell you it's about meditation or just to tell you it's about fasting or spirit travel or like it is about th those things but through the person of jesus which is love that became a person and came and dwelt among men and so he paid our sin debt that all all of the the, the wages of sin is death no matter who you are and so the the, the, the sin that that you've committed in your life you got to pay for mm -hmm. un until you are reconciled by grace through faith through the person of jesus christ and what he did and he bore our sins and so there's again many things that people try to put that off to kind of satisfy or clear their conscience but it doesn't work it's still yeah. there it's just it, they may be have done an amazing job at hiding it hiding offense hiding trauma all of that stuff but i really think that uh that through christ uh we find forgiveness and we find true inner healing through him mm. um but again I, I do think that he is more inclusive than what we've been taught and i do think that people are tapping into aspects of jesus through love um, against such, there is no, there, you know, there is no law. Um, mm -hmm. He, God is love. So anytime we're operating out of love, whether you're a new ager or a Christian or what, or atheist, if you're operating out of love, you're ap operating in Christ, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that there's a bigger, a bigger picture than just this, Hey, come join our church or whatever. So Christians should be uh, at the forefront of all of that, of, mm -hmm. of love, mm -hmm. the most loving people, you know, and, and uh, a supernatural love even, Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that, that walked in supernatural forgiveness and, and, and power. And so faith and all of that comes through that, that supernatural love for me of my relationship with Jesus Christ. When I was at my lowest, he was there mm -hmm. for me to, to forgive me, to cleanse me, wash me of all my sins. So that's the gospel, man. And I think that um, there's no way around it. You know, mm -hmm. and I like to just offer that uh, for people and let them know my story. All I can yes. give them is what I've experienced, you know, nothing more, nothing less. And so, uh -huh. but, I, um, but that's when I was at my lowest and people find themselves there. And even on the surface, they may seem to be like they're good, but they, they're yeah. struggling with stuff They're, I mean, I know some, some top far out witches and stuff like that, who every day they just, they think about reincarnating, to put it that way. They want to mm. end it now. You know, mm. it's an option for them to, to kill themselves and commit suicide and things like that. And it's like, listen, that's not the way. Mm. Jesus is the way that you can, you don't have to live with those thoughts. And I think it's wow. like going through Christ that he can shut those doors and whatever it is that's ailing you. And, um, it, you know, and it's all about higher vibration, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's all about doing the, the, the things that are above, living from the heart up um, yeah. versus tapping into spirituality and connecting with mm. the base lower level entities, which, uh, occupy certain works, um, sins, gossip, slander, mm. uh, not doing the inner work. That's all the lower level things that have access to an individual, unless mm. you're living from the heart up, which is walking in the spirit, walking like Jesus, walking with Jesus. So mm. there's some, there's some stipulations and some things that, uh, that, that, that set us apart, I believe. We're not just another new ager. There's something that we have uh, that they don't that that I, I would like to offer them through mm -hmm. a relationship with the father through his son, Jesus. Mm. So so in your personal life, now you have come from a background where you've been using this technology, like um, uh, all kind of this stuff, right? Uh, could you uh, just, is it okay for you to share what are the things that you were into, like uh, really working with, when you were in this in this stuff? Early, you saw my before Christ. Yeah, yeah, before Christ. Um, you know, honestly, I was a teenager, so um, a lot of it I wasn't really structured. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in, and I'm I I mixed a lot of stuff together. I mixed a lot of uh, rituals and practices, and I was into Wicca, the Satanic Bible. Mm -hmm. um, necromancy a little bit and just doing a lot reading a lot of these works and opening up my mind and then um trying to do the rituals angel magic and things like that but it was all from a place of me tapping into that stuff mm -hmm. um i was in gang activity i would rob people we would mm -hmm. jump people like i was uh, i was dealing with all the lower level stuff so mm -hmm. then when i tapped into the spirit realm 
I, I literally got to see those entities that I was entertaining. Wow. When you rob, when you steal, when you lie, when you cheat, when you mm-hmm. gossip, there's, you are making legal uh, packs and, and creating a, 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 a grid for those types of entities to approach mm-hmm. you. You're giving wow. them access. Mm-hmm. And so when you tap in through that stuff, if you're really going into the spirit and trying to see and trying to make things happen, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I did. And so they all came through and I would, they would pull me into portals and it was crazy stuff. So as far as the stuff that we were doing, my wife was really big into uh, tarot at the time. Uh, she was learning that and we would do parties and stuff and uh, teach people and do seance and stuff and trying to contact spirits. I mean, Ouija board. Um, I told you about the pendulum thing that I would do. Yeah. I had a pendulum. Um, but it, it's debatable now because I approach it from an open mind. But back then I would do it and try to talk to demons. Mm-hmm. And so essentially I had a necklace that I wore and mm-hmm. I would hold it in, in my fingers and uh, I would ask the spirits yes or no questions. And so if it mm-hmm. was a yes, it would move back and forth. If it, if it was a no, it would mm-hmm. move sideways. And um, it got to a point where like I would try to communicate with that spirit. And um, I asked it, um, I used, used to listen to a lot of Marilyn Manson and uh, I would ask it if uh, I would put a song on and it was real slow and it would build up and I would hold the pendulum as still as I could. And I would ask it if it can move in a circle mm-hmm. and it would just start moving really slow, really slow until eventually I'm holding it as still as I can. And this thing is going and I would do it at parties and stuff. And so mm. I think that all of that stuff co- like combined and everything mm. that I was doing opened me up, man. And mm. um, so it was a lot of little stuff, mm. but it was enough, you know, wow. that when it, when it, when whatever veil was thin, whatever portals got opened up, man, it was enough mm. to, to really uh, almost kill me. You know, I was wow. going schizophrenic, like I was hearing voices and, couldn't look people in the eye and everybody I looked at that I felt like the demons were looking at me through people and it was just mm-hmm. insane and so I'm sure it was a heightened sense of the spirit realm you know because mm-hmm. there's a right way to even do a lot of that stuff but mm-hmm. for me because I was doing it through the darkness I was robbing people and listening to demonic music you know and all just types of things and so I was a teenager I was 15 16 when this was happening mm-hmm. and um so um I stole something from a witch and stole a video game from a witch and he put a spell on, on his belongings to that entities would bring his belongings back if somebody stole from him. And an entity uh, appeared out of thin air. It's like an eight foot tall camel ran past and knocked me and my cousin down. So I would see stuff. I would be tormented even, you know, the wind would blow through my house and I would hear whispers and it was scary. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, at rock bottom, man, called out to Christ and, uh, he came in and, and changed my life. So as far as being really, really deep, I mean, we would try to put hexes on people. We would try to, um, you know, command angels and demons to go and get us jobs and stuff like, Hey, we need a job to pay bills. And we would try to do angel magic to get a job and all of that kind of stuff. So it was enough to open up doors into, uh, of not knowing what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know? And that's what a lot of people say, well, you just didn't know what you're doing. You're right. You're hundred percent right. <laughs> I didn't know. I was trying to do it all. So, um, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it, but it was, man, yeah. it, I, I think I, w- I was looking for truth. I was looking for something real. Mm-hmm. You know, I had been a Christian before that. So I knew that there was some type of spirit. There was something through to Christ that we can encounter and experience, but I was still an adolescent and fell away and got back into the darker stuff. And they came in with seven, seven more greater you know, and uh, um, looking for truth. And so in the in the spirit world and, and in witchcraft, and then so now as a Christian, I'm still looking for truth. Like I'm still, mm-hmm. but I found it in the person of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And so he allows us to go into the Bible and kind of maybe even do a lot of those similar things, at least look into them the right way and yeah. be able to um, not practice all of that stuff, but there are similar things. Definitely, there are meditations, there are prayers to, encounter Jesus, you know, and then, uh, and and through that, um, opportunities to encounter the angelic and angels. And, uh, Mm -hmm. but I feel like for me, it's all through Jesus because he is the light of the world that they have to, I can't be approached by any, any demons, not with Mm -hmm. Jesus. So if I'm walking in the light as he is in the light and he's with me, he and I, I and him, uh, when we tap, I don't have to be afraid of anything. Wow. 
I used to be scared to death. <laughs> I don't have to be afraid anymore. Mm. So we can tap in through prayer, through meditation, have these beautiful encounters with the Lord. Mm. And, and through that, he allows us to uh, explore the secrets of the universe, to look at the deep things within the scriptures. I think he longs mm. to share that with individuals, you Absolutely. know, to share things that he's never told anybody that if you draw away in the secret, he wants to whisper sweet nothings in your ears about what the stars really are and where they go at night and, you know, all, mm. how does the wind blow and, you know, all of these things and give you the spiritual science behind it and all of that yeah. stuff. Awesome. So let me ask you a very specific question or detailed. What are uh, the stuff that uh, uh, you still uh, use and uh, when it, you know, the, which are the technology that you are uh, using now to, you know, through Christ Jesus? Yeah. Man, there's a lot because um, everything is spiritual. I think, mm -hmm. I think approaching it that way, knowing that everything that we do is spiritual, um, understanding words and the power of manifestation. Um, it has to be something that's within us. It has to be something like we can't keep going outside of ourselves mm -hmm. to complete ourselves. Like the kingdom of heaven is within. Mm -hmm. We go within through prayer, through meditation. Um, and, and let me just start with that just to give an example. Through, I mentioned prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. um, prayer, there's levels of, of, of talking to the Father. Mm -hmm. Meditation is listening to the Father as well, not just talking, but listening, uh, sitting in silence, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, times of that incense, burning incense, which I did in witchcraft, but now doing it the right way. I mean, incense are all throughout the scriptures, frankincense, yes. you know, um, there's different aromas, understanding that everything is spiritual, that these aromas can put you in a trance, they can make yeah. you more, more peaceful, it can relax you when you smell frankincense. Um, lavender you know the mm -hmm. essential oils like crystals you know something crystals people would think were from the new age but crystals are all throughout the scriptures they were on the the, uh, the breastplate of the ephod mm -hmm. that the high priest would wear in mm -hmm. order to go commune with the father he would have crystals so little things like that um even through prayer and meditation i might in incorporate some breath work breathing mm -hmm. techniques and breathing exercise that the bot that uh get the body more relaxed and to enter mm -hmm. into trance state even mm. that word trance going into trance is it's mentioned all throughout the Bible mm. in a in a good manner. Yeah. I was in a trance on the Lord's day. I fell mm. into a trance in my dream, you know, things like that. So I believe that these were things that the prophets and disciples practiced. Mm -hmm. In Christianity, we like to believe that they were just walking to the store mm. and I fell in a trance. You know? <laughs> they practiced this stuff. We don't understand that Christianity comes yeah. from the East. True, yeah. you know, it's a spiritual practice before it became a religion here in the West. And so understanding that it, you understand trance, how yeah. to get into a trance. And it's something that they practice 100%. Jesus going mm -hmm. away into mountains and on top of mountains to pray and meditate for hours. Come on, who does that? That's an mm -hmm. Eastern thing, you know, for sure. Um, and looking at the similarities. So, I mean, those are a couple things. Um, uh, nothing is off limits. I don't think, you know, especially if it's, uh, if it's natural, I'm really into, uh, the things that the Lord has put here for us, there are like um, different uh, natural technologies and herbs and things like that, that I might use, or, um, you know, what's some of it's controversial, you know, psychedelics, mm -hmm. magic mushrooms and things like mm -hmm. that, that uh, I believe that the Lord has put here yeah. to kind of do the same thing to get us into trance. There's different levels of trance, mm -hmm. you know, just like we have the outer court, the inner mm -hmm. court and the Holy of Holies, like there's different levels that you can enter into trance yeah. state and into worship and into your spirituality. Yeah. Um, those are those are levels. You, there's outer court and many people, you know, just got the yeah. eyes open, clapping their hands for worship. There's other people who are just like stepping in a little bit deeper. And there's some people who aren't even there anymore. Mm. They're like in another world. You know? Absolutely. So looking at those things um, and if, it, if it's natural, I'm for it. Um, mm. I don't know, you know, meditation. But but for me, it's just really going into to encounter the Father. Awesome. You know, and, um, mm. Going into about whatever means. So. Yeah, I yeah I feel uh, when we look at it, we look at it at a religious point of view. But uh, you know, some of the things that I mean, most of the things that you mentioned, or rather, I'll say all of the things that you mentioned, has a very scientific backing towards it. So 
like how you said about going to different level of trance i mean that's that's there uh, in the brain wave states uh, scientifically proven uh, when you talk about that i can connect and relate to you or uh, in a you know in a scientific uh, terminology it's all out there so uh, the crystal stuff you know and uh, here it's it's in india when we we have so much of technology so what you spoke about the crystals we have crystal stuff going on we have yoga going on we have meditation i mean the 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 whole thing about meditation it can be seen in any religion that you put your eyes on uh, but it's all scientific and that is this technology i think has given to us by god so that we can connect with him however we start demonizing it just because somebody else is having it just i i go through so much when you know i had uh, put up a post on my facebook sitting in a pranayam position uh, because sitting on a chair is uh, cannot be that uh you know beneficial for you pranayam you can sit for a long time not on a chair so it's scientific but when people look at it and they say hey he's doing something of the other religion <laughs> it's demonic he's invoking some demons and i think there's so much of science behind the technology yeah. there's so much yeah, of yeah. science behind the technology and yeah. uh, if people are really open minded uh people christians can pick that up and with christ jesus they can so high in their spiritual uh, life so that's what i see and I, that's what i believe um and i i i thank god for people like you who are bringing it out being a bridge between uh, such things uh, to the community so so awesome man so yeah so uh I I saw on one of your podcast that you tried tarot reading. Yeah, um so that that's a there's a little bit of a, a caveat to that. Um Tarot's been brought up a lot lately. You brought it up um other people I think even that same day brought it up in my community um uh when we're talking about divination, you mm-hmm. know, um tarot's the first thing that <clears throat> really comes to mind. maybe even the pendulum thing comes to mind let me address that before we go deeper into this we'll just yeah. talk about divination divinations all throughout the bible in a good it's mentioned of in a good light mm-hmm. for, for some reason we think it's it's demonic and i i go back why i i think we think it's demonic is because in acts the book of acts i think it's chapter 19 i i got it written down but um paul was uh, followed by a psychic woman who was able to per- see the future mm-hmm. and um uh, and it, the bible says that he rebuked the spirit that was on her and it said she did those things by the spirit of divination. Mm-hmm. The word divination used there is not the right translation. The right translation is she was possessed by the spirit of Python. Mm. This is a Greek spirit that was a dragon and mm-hmm. uh and 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 in Greek mythology that she had, was channeling and mm-hmm. it was given her the ability to uh tr- to uh interpret the future and prophesy kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh and it says divination so we like up oh, divination is bad and there's times in the old testament where god rebuked the diviners it's because their spirit wasn't in it they were doing it the wrong way mm. they were using the technology for the wrong reasons they mm. got kick god we don't need you anymore we have your technology but the technology is for us to reveal what the father is saying yeah. and knowing that he is the author and creator of everything mm. and so divination in and itself using the pendulum that I was using and getting those yes and no answers there's an interesting thing like what what was I communicating with in my mind I was talking to demons we've mm-hmm. talked about it recently a lot of people use their own energy their own intuition the mm-hmm. holy spirit speaking mm-hmm. to them like what what has the ability to move that that mm-hmm. yes and no um maybe even here's another idea too mm-hmm. that I was moving it with my own energy that I wanted it to because when it was going in circles like this like real big yep. Yep. I'm trying I'm trying to make it in my mind mm-hmm. like I'm like trying to sit there and move it like was mm-hmm. I doing it so there's some more things that come to the table talking about divination again all throughout the scriptures uh Joseph says you know do you not know that uh one like me uh has the ability to uh see things through divination I can 
tell the future and all these things bragging. And he was like one of the greatest magicians ever. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and he was of the Lord. Um, the, Genesis and Psalms talks about there's a scripture that says that the casting of lots, which mm -hmm. is a form of divination, a form of sortation or rolling mm -hmm. of the dice. Lord, should we go left or right? Which way do we go? Flip a coin. Boom. Mm -hmm. Let's go mm -hmm. right. That's where mm -hmm. the Lord's telling us to go. And they really believe that God spoke through those things. Mm -hmm. And um, it says that the casting of lots, that it's every decision, every decision, not some, not years ago, but the casting of lots, it's every decision is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That he speaks through this. And every time it's mm -hmm. the Lord's will. So there were times where the high priest used the uh, Urim and Thummim, uh, these magical rocks that, and it was just a form of sortation. Mm -hmm. I feel like they would reach in a bag and if, it, if, it, if somebody had a question, hey, does the Lord want me to marry so-and-so? Reach in there, pull a rock out. It was either a black or a white stone. It had engravings on them. Mm. Boom. No. Don't mm. do it. The Lord's saying no. You know, and they believed it. Mm. And so that's a form of, we would call that divination. They're divining, you know, talking to, the, using these things to co communicate with the divine. And you can use those same technologies to contact mm. demons. Mm. So... It's the intention. It's using the sciences in the right way. And mm. so that's when it, when it comes to cards. And so mm. this is a, uh, did you, you, did you get a copy of these? I know he got the newer ones. Or you said you were. <laughs> I, I um, got, I got the, uh, the woodcutter. Woodcutter. The, the. So for me, let me. Go ahead. I got this one. I want to. Okay, that's his new one. Okay, nice. That's big. Um, it, so, so for me, we so we got we uh, I got these from uh, um, D.W. Prudence, and so um, he's a, a Christian mystic and a, a um, Kabbalist. And so, when you're looking up Chris, somebody sent me is like, "Hey, Christian tarot cards." I was like, "Let me look them up." And I and I just want to say this: so when it comes to tarot, I'm mm -hmm. not big into tarot just because there's you know there's um, um, already rules that are outside of the Bible. There's rules that they made up on how to use them and what these characters represent. Everything is allegory. Mm. Everything, God speaks through symbols, even in the yep. Bible. We read about stories. God's talking about you. Mm. We think we're reading about King David, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, but we're really reading about us fighting our own giants today yep. and the golden calves and idols within our own lives. Like, you got to understand allegory. And so, um, so with that being said, I know the tarot works off of allegory of what people are going through in their lives, but you have to study what these allegories mean and going down the path of the tarot. So me personally, I'm not, I don't vouch for tarot cards, um, mm. even though these are the tarot of the most high. So these are so-called Christian tarot cards, mm. but on these specific cards, they have, um, there's like at the bottom, it'll say the wheel and there's a tarot wheel or whatever, but at the top, there's these other ones that he put with them as well. Mm. So it says succession. And then there's scriptures that go according with it. And all of them have Bible verses. Mm. And then at the and a different one that says at the bottom, it says Ace of Swords. I don't know what the Ace of Swords mean. I don't mm. study tarot. I do know by the spirit what conflict means. Mm. And so for me, I started using these in prayer. So we would do we would take callers and stuff and we would be in prayer. And I just wanted to see if this technology would work for myself. Mm. Mm. So somebody would call in and they would, uh, and I would kind of be in that meditative state in the state of prayer, but I'm still talking to them and they would tell me their story and what they had. And so it's like, yeah, my husband is, uh, he's just been so distant lately and I don't know what it is that I can win his affection back. And I'll pull a card and I don't tell them like a tarot reading. I pulled the six of coins, mm. but even with that, do you see what that says? Adultery, yeah. So they call in and say, my, you know, my husband's been very distant and blah, 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 blah. And it's adultery. So I have to figure out by the, the way of the word of knowledge, the, the mm. discernment of spirits, how does this card that I pull? Because it's every lot is of the Lord. Mm. And I'm I, for myself to make sure and people would call in. And so, and then I would, I would address that at, almost as a spirit. There's a spirit mm. of adultery that somebody has went out. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't say it as a prophet from like declaring it. I say, Hey, maybe let's mm -hmm. pray. You know, have you been unfaithful? Has he been unfaithful in the past? Whatever way and the Lord will give you the way. So these cards aren't mean nothing. They're mm -hmm. no, these are nothing in and of itself, but the spirit behind them, as far as you being able to read into it, 
and, yep. and see. So you have to go off of your own prophetic ability, your own prophetic mm -hmm. gifting, discernment, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Word of knowledge is, the word of knowledge is how does this card apply to this person's life? Mm -hmm. The word mm -hmm. of wisdom is how do I articulate it mm -hmm. and share it with them in a way that they're going to understand it. So Father, give me knowledge and give me wisdom on how this applies. And mm -hmm. so even with your own, your own prayer, um, the next one I, I got here, and you can, if you want to maybe do a couple, um, yeah. but for me, I don't, I don't do it as a show to like mm -hmm. pull this card for you. And this says that somebody is being divisive in the relationship. This is the division card. Mm -hmm. Somebody's being divisive. This is what the card, I don't do that. And mm -hmm. I would, I would just do it for myself on how to pray. Mm -hmm. Father, I come against the spirit of division right now, Father. I thank you for unity in this relationship. Father, mm -hmm. I thank you that you're coming against this spirit and that you're pouring out your peace, unity, mm -hmm. God, restoring to them the joy of their salvation, where they were when they first met God, bring them back together and restore that. And so, yeah, you can do that without the cards, mm -hmm. but we have the examples through the scriptures of how they would use similar things and um, using it for his good. And these are tools yep. the Lord has given us. You don't yep. have to use it. You don't have to use anything. Speaking yep. in tongues is a tool. You don't have to speak in tongues, but you can. He can mm. give it to us as a tool. Fasting is a tool. You don't have to fast, but mm. you can. Mm. Praise and worship is a tool. You don't have to worship, but you can. All of these things for mm. the child of God to use them in, in, in the right light and, and use them responsibly on, on for how he has given it to us. Everything points back to the Father. Mm. Everything. These cards, this recording, this talk, you know, ideas, dreams, vision, everything mm. is echoing uh, him and so we have mm. to be able to see him in all of those things yeah and that's when it comes to dream interpretation astral projection tarot cards sacred geometry what is sacred geometry when it comes to the lord what is the spoken word when it comes to the lord what is death in the afterlife when it comes to mm. the lord everything it, 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 it has his name on it so that's how i use you know these cards and mm. uh and that technology that that we have and so so i don't vouch for tarot per se but I really do like how these are, are formed. And then I have some friends in uh, Australia, uh, Christ Alignment, which they have their own brand of destiny cards. Mm -hmm. And they, they have created them all and they may pull one in, and it's a bird. And mm -hmm. so if you pull a bird, okay, Lord, the Lord wants you to soar. You're about to fly. He's going to mm -hmm. take you to new heights. What does a bird represent? And so you have to be able to, um, do you have a pet bird? You may be way off. But it's mm -hmm. about, okay, Lord, what does a bird mean in this situation? That's how the Lord speaks through symbolism. Yeah. 100%. Allegory. Absolutely. Absolutely. And signs and look at the zodiac. Mm. You know, this all throughout the scriptures. Those are pictures of animals. What does, the, what does that mean? Mm. You know, and it's for those who are trained in it. And so we, again, we got to use this stuff responsibly, but they are at our disposal for sure. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you see, uh, it, God speaks through many ways. You know, the scripture says he just speaks through many ways in dreams and visions, in allegories and uh, in images. And uh, to be a prophet, uh, you need to align to his voice and able to listen to what you see around. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, like some. You see, for God, Jeremiah said, look at a boiling pot and he spoke the whole message to him. He would tell, look at the fig tree and he would speak the whole message. So I think Christians, uh, it's all about uh, being tuned to the voice of God and whatever they see, listen to the voice of God through what they see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, I see a kind of uh, like a three categories out there. There's one category of Christians who believe that all the gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit got over uh, in the in the in the in the early church, um, and then now you are not supposed to operate into it. And there's another category who would say uh, you got to. Here, here are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can only see visions. God will speak through you in visions and dreams or word of knowledge. That's it. But I think uh, we are moving and uh, growing in our revelation. And now uh, we need to really open our minds and look out 
you know and say god can speak through anything around us and yeah. through 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 spiritual technologies out there so instead of demonizing them uh really uh take them out and uh discern for yourself and ask and seek the lord to speak into your life and i think if we start learning such technologies uh obviously not getting into it so and uh, you know forgetting about christ but taking this technology and and getting help from them to listen to the voice of god there's no harm in that yeah yeah that's the that's the thing and um every you know again his fingerprint he's speaking through everything and it's to be able to hear him and there's different levels of of being able to hear him through all things yeah. and I, you know i feel like yeah. um when you say god can't speak through something i think you're testing the lord and the bible says don't test them but we say what what god can't or i won't or i will never and then mm-hmm. we find ourselves doing those things or being able to be being led down those a similar path to uh to hear him so again there's there are the lord is speaking so much and you have to ready yourself and and position yourself to hear him he's always yeah. speaking i don't think the lord yeah. is ever silent you know yeah. um but us listening and things that we have in in the way and there's different uh pitches and tones and vibrations and levels that he speaks at that listen when i first got born again i couldn't even be around incense at all i thought incense were demonic <laughs> like because i used them for yeah. demons you know but i you know but it's throughout the scriptures you know the mm. priests would burn incense and all that kind of stuff so there was things that i had to go through and get over and fears that i had to work through and um where I was able to incorporate that into my spiritual life and and that should be elementary stuff but yeah. there's different things whether it's through prayer fasting meditation um and then you walking at a level of density in the spirit that you're able to hear the the higher vibrations whether they're yeah. speaking through angels like you know the spirit spirit messengers mm. you know and even even the dark stuff being able to see god in your darkness and see god through your in your past and mm. knowing that he's the author and finisher of it all and he yeah. orchestrated it and that's his sovereignty and understanding that um mm. allows you to uh to be able to uh expect uh not expect but to see him in it all no matter yeah. what it is or where you go or what hardships you may you know befall or rejection or people mm. lashing out at you or you lashing out at them you know you're able to kind of see how everyone is an extension of yourself and i think so when it really comes to I think spirituality really is it really is practical. Like I like mm-hmm. to bar out, you know, breath work and leaving your body and those kind of things, but just keying in on everyday things that mm-hmm. we do that have spiritual implications. Yeah. Again, when it comes to words and you know, we you mentioned sacred geometry and I have sacred geometry all around me. I think that is the language of the universe. Absolutely. It, it it is it is moving, it is vibration um that when we speak Every everything is moving, understanding that, and so just and being able to see that everything is moving, everything can be manipulated, everything can be changed as you speak to it. The power and authority that you have within your breath, this breath that we breathe, connects us all together. It is the mm. Holy Spirit, it mm. is the pranayama, the life force, the energy that you know holds everything together, mm. and uh, it's the creative power of God in the in the earth. Absolutely. Understanding that we're breathing that same energy. And, and the only difference is just you're not aware of it. When Absolutely. you become aware of the power, then you you possess it by faith to step in and step out and mm. use these spiritual technologies that have been there the whole time. You just weren't Absolutely. aware of it. Absolutely, and I I, I strongly believe uh, uh, the the prophets of the old would use uh, such technology, like uh, you know the Bible says that. Moses knew all the wisdom of the Egyptians mm-hmm. then if you if you see one of the greatest prophet who could really interpret stuff well was Daniel and if you check Daniel chapter 4 i think it says he was a chief of magician yeah so these guys were in a, they knew the egyptian technology they knew the babylonian technology and the yeah. scripture says daniel was uh very good in all the literature and he had good knowledge of all that that means he studied 
all the spiritual technology when it says he was good in literature it does not mean he knew uh, physics and maths and science but it means he knew the spiritual technology of the babylonians so and he was called as the chief of the magician so i believe the prophets really used spiritual technologies of different ways to connect with god to listen to the voice of god and uh, they were really benefited with all that stuff wow so you have you have awesome stuff that i am feeding on uh, on your channel that is uh, you have amazing uh, guided uh, meditations and uh, i try to almost listen to it every day especially there's a meditation on your channel called as the throne room that's really awesome oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and 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 <laughs> yeah and you have more uh, meditations on uh, i think it's on your website on astral projection tuning your chakras yeah, there's a couple different ones there's a couple different ones there's um there's some interactive ones, you know, and so the interactive ones are were voice actors and sound effects. And it's like ASMR mm. that really put you in that meditative state and you close your eyes and you're there, you know? And mm. so those are downloaded messages and, and journeys that the Lord gave me. Mm. And it's such a beauty to write and such a beauty to be a part of and manifest that stuff mm. out of a spiritual encounter and birth it out of the spirit world to where other people can experience it. Mm. And that's the thing too, to make this stuff practical and, not just for me, or I see this, or I'm able to No, I'm trying to help you. If the mm. Lord's called you to it, here are the tools. I'm open and honest about my pitfalls, what I believe. Mm -hmm. Just so it's going to help you be able to raise your consciousness and be able to walk at that level of faith as well. So the meditations for sure, um, voice actors and sound effects. There's a bunch of them. You can just go to truthseeker.com. They're there. They'll, there'll be links on how to, I think right now I have the, um, encountering jesus meditation for free uh free download and that pretty much uh brings you back to jerusalem two thousand years ago and you're walking through jerusalem in a crowd of people and you see jesus just ahead of you and mm. you're just trying to make your way through the crowd to uh to say hello and um and you encounter people and all kinds of things have you heard that mm. one yeah yeah i i heard yeah, that that's that, that's awesome you uh, one of my church members was literally uh, you know, in that meditative state and literally weeping when that thing was going on. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't listen to, even though I wrote them and I recorded them out of an encounter, mm -hmm. especially the throne room. Like I can't read it or, or listen to it without just weeping, man. And um, wow. for so many reasons, I remember when I wrote the script, mm. um, I would tell people cause I was still working on it, but I would, uh, a friend of mine, I, I was reading it to her. I was like, hey, I want you to check out how this sounds. And I began just to read the script that I wrote. And as I'm, I couldn't even read it because I'm wow. just like stammering and, and just weeping at, at what God had spoke to me and through me through that stuff. And no, knowing that it was going to bring other people into those encounters, people who don't even know the Lord. So those new agers mm -hmm. are stepping into an encounter with Jesus through a guided meditation or stepping into the throne room of God. Mm. and seeing the four living creatures singing holy 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 and the 24 elders and i mean they're encountering that through a meditation it's so i'm so such an honor for me to be a conduit of that because i get to ex I, I feel like a kid man i feel like i feel like i didn't even write it you know what i'm saying because like, i because yeah. usually th there's a level of, of like okay we created it and so you don't benefit from it or you can't receive because you know what's coming up next and but for me, like with the music and even a lot of my work, I go back and read it. Mm. Um, I'm able to listen to it and experience it almost for the first time every time. Wow. Every time it's a new encounter. You know wow. what I'm saying? It's a new revelation. And so it's just wow. such a privilege to be able to bring that stuff to the table. Wow. Wow. And you have some meditation on tuning the chakras and tune uh, astral projections also. Yes. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the, the chakra one for me is, um, you know, I can't prove that the chakra systems exist. I do know, mm. understand the technology and the vortexes within the scripture, I mean, within the body. Mm. But for me, and, and I think that this goes back to Eastern thought too, is that they represent different things in your life, mm. like the lower level stuff, your sexual mm. drive, mm. your appetite, 
your heart space, your spirit, your psychic and spiritual abilities, like all of that stuff represents mm. things within your body. So for me, it's like almost doing work or doing ministry on those areas of your life. Wow. You start at the root and we'll move up. And so kind of letting the energy flow so that, you know, we're talking about allegory. So mm. for me, those chakras are allegories for, okay, that represents the fight I got in with my mom and I haven't been able to move past it. That is my unbelief, my doubt, my this, my that. So um, that's how I approach that, kind of seeing that energy just flowing mm -hmm. through the, uh, the chakra systems and the different um, areas of our life that move out. I mean, so there's that. And then the, the astral projection one allows you kind of the same way to start from the root and just kind of getting into that trance state, that meditative state and lifting up through the body, seeing it, watching the uh, consciousness and intention go up to the third eye, to the crown, Mm -hmm. and then going out through the top of the head. Mm -hmm. So you had some experiences with it? Yes. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah those were some of the first ones that I did. And um, and so for, for me personally, and then so I was like, you know what I need to, since it worked for me and I had a powerful experience with it, let me pay it forward and record it. And so other people can experience this too. And um, it's tricky. And I think I even say that when you read the description or maybe even at the beginning, but you get better. All of this stuff, you get better. You get better at reading those cards. You get better at prophesying. You get better, mm -hmm. better at breath work. You know, the more you practice, they're like muscles. Mm -hmm. You know, the more you work them out, you get used to, to it. So with that, it, it feels weird. Mm -hmm. It feels scary when you raise that energy up and it tries to come out the top of your head. You, wow, whoa, it scares you. It brings you back to your body. So it may take several times for you to be able to do it and, mm -hmm. uh, and be able to raise the energy out to the top of the crown. Mm -hmm. um, all of this stuff it, you have to practice you are you in and are you up meditation. are you up with some more meditations because i'm in love with your meditations yeah man yeah yeah so we've been doing some some beautiful meditations for the last maybe three three four weeks now that i've had um on on our school of the mystics and so they're just been live meditations and so they're even prophetic with like doing you know there's me when, when we go into spirit i'm able to do work on people like mm. through prayer so i mean and that's you with the use of the third eye that's the use of moving moving energy whether you want to call it reiki whether you mm. want to call it faith healing so if i pray for someone there's not just i'm just not just offering up a prayer and hey come whatever may it's me like going in and being able to to read you and see if there's mm. any uh blockages in you if there's any areas of your life and it taps in through again word of knowledge prophesying all of these things still come into play as tools mm. that we have to do this Mm. But um, being able to pull things off of people and releasing spirit of peace, releasing love and, and uh, by faith doing those things and being able to see the manifestations while it's happening. So on our Thursday nights, we do the guided meditation, but there's still like us going in together. And then they'll be like, if I know somebody struggling, whatever, the Lord will give me downloads to pull those strongholds off of them. So there's that too. But I'm going to, with that being said, I'm going to record these individually living from the heart, asking the love of Christ to come in through the heart uh, and filling your whole body with light. There's just some other visions and things that the Lord has given me that we've done that I'm going to record them and put them up very soon. Since the well, audio book is done now, um, I'll have time to, to focus on some more of these meditations for sure. Wow. Wow. So, well, uh, I think uh, we are coming to an end of this podcast, but it was awesome talking to you, man. So, really blessed and i'm sure the viewers are going to be blessed by all that you shared so uh where can people find you and uh, your facebook yeah. details uh, and yes, sir, all that man. stuff um, yeah yeah so yeah th thanks for having me again and uh you know i'm set to have you on my podcast in a couple of weeks too so i get to introduce you to all my <laughs> audience and things like that and I'm, i know they're gonna love it we'll give a shout out to again to to kirby uh, yeah, Kirby Delanero, because I think you found my work through him first, yes. right? Yeah. Okay, so. And then, uh, yeah, I saw, I think, uh, Nico also. Nico, shout yeah. out. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Jeff, too. Jeff yeah. uh, Moody. Uh, I talked to him the other day, and I told him about you. And he was like, yeah, I think I'm friends with that brother. So Jeff Moody, <laughs> being ordained through Kirby, he's a good guy. So we're mutual friends. So shout out to him, too. But yeah, um, you can go to my website, truthseeker.com, truthseeka-h.com. Right now, there's a pop-up 
uh, to, to download the, the um, Encountering Jesus meditation for free. If you sign up for the email list, you'll get a, a download yep. link for that. My med- all my meditations, all my podcasts, my, my book, all of that stuff is available at truthseeker.com. Awesome. Awesome. I'll be putting up the links, guys, uh, on my Facebook and, and also on my YouTube channel down below so you can get the details there also. So once again, uh, Derek, thank you so much. You're an amazing man and I encourage you to continue the good work that you're doing and uh, bless you and bless you. Thank you, my brother. Same to you. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. And it's, it's a, a, a blessing and an honor to call you brother and to, to do ministry. Same here. So thank you, brother. Same here, same here. God bless you. Bye.